left it in his head, Peter. 31-24. So we've talked a lot about the Bears, but big doings with the Cowboys. And how about this? After the game, Dak Prescott was asked if it was true that the Cowboys have quit on head coach Jason Garrett. That's false. Uh, false as ever. Um, this team is focused on right now, and that's the only thing that matters. Uh, as I said, somehow we're 6-7 and seven and still in front of our division. Uh, we believe in our coach. Uh, we believe in his message. We're going out there, and we've just got to figure it out as players uh, what it is on game day. Do you feel like at any point these guys quit out there tonight, or do you feel like they all gave maximum effort? Again, I, th I know that um, uh, everyone is uh, disappointed with uh, outcome. Uh, we all thought that we could come up here and play a good football game. We didn't. It is imperative for us to, uh, 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 as we go down toward the playoffs, it's imperative that we play a good football game. Your job security has become a massive focal point for this franchise nationally, locally. Do you think that's a distraction for these players right now? Yeah, I can't speak to that. Um, you know, the, the, the most important thing we have to do is learn from this game and get back to work. Let's bring in Ian Rappaport now as the Jerry Jones, Jason Garrett saga continues. What is the coach's status with these Cowboys going forward? Jason Garrett is still employed, and for the next three games, he is going to remain still employed. Jerry Jones has been very clear, and Stephen Jones has told me that as well over the course of the last couple months. They do not believe in midseason firings. They don't believe in quote-unquote uh, giving a spark to this team. And it's not even clear, as Troy Aikman said on the broadcast, if there's anyone on the staff right now that would warrant being an interim coach. If they thought that was something that was going to lead them to the playoffs and lead them to the NFC title game and into the Super Bowl, they probably would do it. But at this point, they just don't think that's what's going to happen. They don't think it would help. So here's the reality for the Cowboys and for Cowboys fans. The coaching staff as it is, is what it is. Jason Garrett's going to finish the season. They're going to, get, going to get to wherever they get to, maybe win the division at 8-8 eight and eight or, God forbid, even worse. See what happens in the playoffs. And unless they go far, very far into the playoffs, Jason Garrett is going to be looking for another job and we will have a big-time search for the next Cowboys head coach. And Jason Garrett will be somewhere in the NFL, as Jerry Jones has said. Thank you so much, Ian. They're yeah, still so nice. atop the NFC East, of course, and we'll talk to you in a bit. Uh, even with a losing record, as things stand, the Bears within a game and a half of the Vikings for that final wild card spot. They have the toughest remaining schedule, by the way, at Packers, Chiefs, at Vikings. But they're pulling it together and have some really nice confidence and momentum uh, in the late fourth of the season. So, guys, the Cowboys saying Jerry Jones, Jason Garrett, that whole situation is not affecting and impacting the team. You heard what Dak had to say. What do you think? I believe it is. I believe that everybody is pressing. Defensively, they're not playing as talented as they are. The offense isn't playing as well as they are. I seen Ezekiel Elliott out into the flat. He drops a rock. He had Gallup on the sideline. He dropped the rock. Dak Prescott drops back. He has Amari Cooper wide open, basically skips the ball right before Amari could catch. And I believe this is it right here. I mean, everybody is pressing, including Kellen Moore, which I asked for Kellen Moore to show me some extreme creativity, and I didn't see that. Jason Garrett, you're at the helm. You know, you said, Kyle, during the highlight, that maybe this is fourth and 10 on Jason Garrett's coach career with the Cowboys, mm -hmm. and maybe it is. And if it is fourth and 10, wouldn't you pull out all the stops? Like, wouldn't you go out there and say, uh, I'm going to bring some pop. I'm going to go out there and bring some Speaking of pop, Jason Garrett should have did like the namesake in Chicago and had more flavors than Garrett's popcorn. Hey, You know, mm. just bring everything that you have. Instead, it was very basic. And because of that, when guys are pressing and you have a basic game plan, these are your results. They had a 17-play drive to start the game. It took nine minutes. Zeke Elliott was doing They were running that little option with Dak. He they ran the, the ball. Pocket. They ran the ball. Dak was out of the pocket. They did the same thing against Buffalo last week, and then they just completely go to sleep. And, it, yeah. and they even intercepted the next possession. They got Trubisky on the interception. Like, everything was everything going was their way. Everything was going right. And then it goes wrong. My issue is after the game, Jerry doing the thing with the media again. I, I know we can't control that, but, like, here we go again, and he says, I'm not going to do a marathon press conference. I did a 28-minute one last time, but still the quote in the headline is, Jerry Jones speaks after loss. And I want to give you a tweet from Jane Slater, who covers this team impeccably on the network. She says already she's got coaching, you know, okay, I could confirm there's a real interest in Urban Meyer. Okay. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm told mm -hmm. Stephen Jones actually spoke with them, and Lincoln Ooh. Riley's there, and oh, the Clemson OC, not Dabo, but Tony Elliott is there. Like, 
This is what happens when everyone is talking in the media and you are the Dallas Cowboys and you are now. We're already filling in a guy's role with college coaches and college coordinators mm. and saying that. The, and Jane, she's connected. She's plugged in. So someone from that organization is telling Jane, oh, yeah, no, Stephen had a conversation with Urban Meyer recently. Someone's saying, oh, well, don't forget Tony Elliott, the <laughs> offensive coordinator at Clemson. Like, they still got a season to play. There's still three games left. There's still the playoffs. This is what happens when Rome burns, and that's mm -hmm. what it feels like. And right now, it's hard for me to have any confidence, no matter who they play moving forward. I don't care if they play terrible teams moving forward. They're going to come out on top. Is there any way to unburn Rome? I don't think so this year. Right no? no, I don't see it. Don't you just want to slap him upside the head and say, wake up? What's wrong with you? After last, do you have any soul in there? And, and it's just like, I, it's very frustrating with the coaching thing because it just feels personal. It feels like stubbornness. It feels like hubris. Um, they got nothing. They're, they're really bad right now. Their best players are the Eagles defensive backs. That's the best thing they have going for them. And you get a rough patch. You can lose a few. Everybody has rough patches. They've lost four out of five and look completely listless. And then Dak comes out and he's standing there in the bow ties. No, it's not the coaching. Absolutely not. So what is it? It's not the roster. Don't tell me it's the opponent. Because this whole Mitch Trubisky thing, that's a nice story. And that's very... It's Mitch Trubisky. They've been a bad team all year, and they just ran all over your asses. And you're Dallas Cowboys. So, like, what would you change if not now, when? You're going to wait till the offseason? Because the worst thing the Cowboys have going for them, which I'm so sick of hearing, they're still in first place. Who cares? This is the Super Bowl or bust year. You can go ahead and win the NFC East at 7-9 and nine and see how happy you are. If that's the kind of company you want to have, then you have it. Congratulations. If not, maybe make a change. This is their remaining schedule. They've got the Rams. They've got at Eagles up against the Redskins. The Eagles in this race for the NFC East. Their schedule is four division opponents. They've got the Giants with Eli Manning under center on Monday Night Football, Week 14. So I want to know your take on this, uh, what Troy Aikman had to say, what Ian sort of alluded to. I brought it up here at the table. If you get rid of Jason Garrett in season, somebody's got to step up. And I don't know that, you know, Rod Marinelli with his uh, coat last time he coached didn't really work out. This defense got run over and really has taken a step back from being the sixth best defense last year. So Chris Richard, like, is he the guy to come and take over with the defense taking a step back? What do you guys think of that, that there's not that person to... I don't, Troy Aikman made that point. They're still in the playoff hunt, so okay. why would you fire the coach if that's the case? Because right. they're not winning the Super Bowl, they're not doing anything. So that can't said, make that call right now. But, but that said, I disagree with Troy Aikman, and I'll disagree with you on this one. Rod Marinelli is a respected guy, and he's no a Vietnam veteran and has coached a million years, and he could step in there, and it's not like they're gonna, the kids are going to go nuts. Right. Chris Richard is a young defensive coach that has gotten They respect him, interviews. they'll follow him. They respect him enough, at the very least... You can't tell me there's no one on that staff. Those are two guys who could be head coaches tomorrow if they, want, if they wanted to yeah. interview for some jobs. So my question is, do you think that they have another guy in mind that they're like this? They have a plan set in place, like let's just get through this, and we oh. you know. Do yeah, I, I think if Jerry is going to get rid of Jason Garrett, there's someone that they've got their eye on for sure. Everybody's crowing about John Kittner this morning, and he should step in. And then, look, Marinelli, you don't need Vince Lombardi to step yeah. in. You need a leader. You need someone to energize. And no one's more energized than Marinelli. People love him. I think there's a big what-if factor. If you fire Jason Garrett and it goes south, it's kind of what you expect. It's like, all right, you fire your head coach in the, at the end of the season. You don't expect them to go into the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. But if you fire him, I think there's going to be people sitting back saying, well, what if we just kept uh, Jason Garrett because they're winning the division? And what if they turned it around? If you let him ride this out, there is no what if. The it, it plays itself the out. The difference in Carolina is that you look at Ron Rivera and you say, okay, you've been here nine years. We're going to give you a head start on your next job. We're not going to the playoffs. The Cowboys are still in the playoffs. Right, like, exactly. It's tough to say to them, like, we're better off with a new guy. I also would contend, though, that those other guys in that room, those guys are capable coaches, too. For sure. There's no, more, there's no juice on this team. That's, right? The most upsetting thing is you look at Rex Ryan. I don't know what you think of him as a head coach, but that team, when they knew that his back was against the wall, they rallied. They circled yeah. the wagons. They Chuck Pagano a couple years ago. Right. They won the last couple we're, games. Like, it's an indictment that we're not seeing that here. In the I agree. Room. When's Jerry going to stop messing around and just name himself head coach? Can we get there? Are you ready for that? Because I am. Coach Jones? Yes. And, and the whole Urban Meyer, Jerry Jones thing, it might happen, whatever. Jerry likes to be the number one.